All right, and we're live. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is going to be a workshop on how to build Fetty Mods. I'm Cody. I'm the head of developer product support at Fetty, and I'm here with Oscar. Oscar, you want to give a quick introduction? Yep. What's going on, guys? Uh, I'm also uh, working on, on the engineering team at Fetty. And uh, yeah, pumped to share how Fetty Mods are coming along. There's just a lot more to do, but uh, this is going to be the first kind of hands-on uh, uh, look at, uh, at what they are, how to build them, and what the future holds. Yep. So we've been doing a ton of work on WebLN and uh, how you can kind of use that as an interface between AI apps and Bitcoin. And so when it comes to WebLN, um, Fetty as of right now is kind of the only uh, game in town for like the mobile, uh, like a mobile way of interacting with WebLN. And so that's going to be some of the stuff we cover there. But um, it's also going to be so all of the stuff that we've covered up until now for WebLN on interacting with um, AI applications. Like we must have been doing it on desktop. If you want to move into mobile, this could be like a good start for it. So, uh, Oscar, you want to take it over? Yep, uh, let's do it. So, yeah, first I'm going to run through just kind of a few intro overview slides. Um, so we got to understanding what Fetty Mods actually are. Um, gonna also just kind of disambiguate them from Fetty Mint modules. So Fetty versus Fetty Mint. Um, there's a, a little bit of clarity here to uh, to, uh, to to get. And um, so yeah, these are actually some slides from uh, Pete, Pete Wynn, uh, the head of product at, at Fetty, uh, recently did a, a presentation at B2C Prague about this. So um, these, these might seem familiar if you, if you watch that. Uh, but Fetty Mint modules, uh, more complex, lower level functionality. That, that's Fetty Mint, right? Fetty, Fetty is building, is using the Fetty Mint protocol to make it as easy as possible uh, to, to use Fetty Mint. Um, so there's Fetty Mint modules and Fetty mods. We're going to be talking about Fetty mods. Um, and Fetty mods, there's, it's still early. There's still more, a lot more that we're about to do. Um, but, but yeah, just in case you've, you're familiar with Fetty Mint versus Fetty, um, we're going to be talking about the Fetty mods. Fetty Mint modules are, are a lot deeper um, through it in Rust, and um, we're not going to get into that so much. To uh, integrate with but, um, but yeah, we're, we're in uh, phase one, as, as you'll see uh, what that means. So real quick, just Fetty Mint modules, if you, you want to learn more about this, there's, there's other resources for this, but um, this is what's going to allow the expansion of functionality um, of the of the, of the core protocol. Um, and so, you know, actually getting closer to how the Federation works, um, customizing the behavior, things like, um, you know, my federated mining pools, uh, like kind of stable coin, uh, Bitcoin backed stable coins, um, storage password management, all these things that really need close access to Fedimint APIs. Um, these, these might need to, to live at the Fedimint module level. Fedi mods, um, these are going to get rolled out developed over over three phases phase one is where we're at now we're just going to use the existing open lightning standards to um basically integrate with the existing ecosystem um but then you know eventually uh you know phase two basically what we're looking at is you have a web ln compatible web app right it's, it's hosted on the internet and you have the members of the federation um using fetty connecting to the federation you're still going to be loading a website from some external host, and the you know the risks there. Who knows who's who's serving that? The federation is not serving that per se in phase one, um, but we want to make that more bulletproof. So the federation uh, should be able to um, you know give give confidence to its its members that the hosting is coming from a secure place. That so phase two is is we're, we're going to be moving towards that just to make it a little bit more secure in terms of where that uh, web app is being hosted from. And, and then phase three will be what I was mentioning um, with this you know, tighter integration with the actual Fediment APIs. Um, but yeah, that, that's a ways out. Um, this workshop is going to be kind of a look at what, what phase one, where, where we're at with phase one, phase one and uh, how to get your hands on it. Um, so yeah, a little bit more detail on each of these phases and then we'll uh, kind of get deeper into the workshop. Like I mentioned, open lightning standards um, how this integrates with the Fetty app. If you haven't downloaded the Fetty app yet, we are in, um, you know, we do have a, an alpha version. Um, if you check out uh, alpha.fetty.xyz, uh, you should kind of be able to download the, the app. Uh, you get the APK, the iOS uh, test flight, 
and uh, or the Play Store, whatever you prefer. We also have a PWA. Um, so, so yeah, definitely check it out if you haven't already. We have a Signet Federation um, that you can use to kind of play with it. And so what you'll see there is, is kind of like a set of almost like app home screen icon looking things. And um, th these are basically what we're referring to now as, as Fetty Mods. And so the idea is that the Federation, when you download the Fetty app, you have to connect to a Federation. The Federation is going to be able to configure what Fetty Mods show up by default. Uh, and then in addition to that, each Federation member can add their own custom Fetty Mods to whatever websites that they want. Um, so we're actually going to see, you know, we're going to look at look at that directly today in the workshop. So, uh, but yeah, that's the idea. Um, so yeah, just being able to send, uh, use the wallet, the, the Fetty wallet, uh, to send or receive Bitcoin to, to these Fetty mods. Um, obviously, using the, the WebLN standards that, uh, you know, there's been some some workshops on on WebLN already this week. So, um, yeah, I, I also want to make make sure not to to repeat too much of that, but we are going to uh, kind of do a deeper dive on on WebLN. Um, so yeah, that, that's basically what phase one is looking like, just kind of using LN, uh, web LN and also LN URL auth, um, and anything lightning related, we want to take advantage of existing integrations. Like I mentioned, phase two, this whole idea is this kind of web hosting, uh, element points of control, deplatforming, um, you know, whatever the Federation itself can do to make that more bulletproof, um, Migrating and running Federation, or sorry, migrating and running Fetty mods or, you know, just web apps from the Federation itself. Uh, we're, you know, we're, we're working towards that, um, that, that kind of solution um, just to, to give communities, uh, you know, more control. Um, and, you know, in the context of AI for all, Federations running their own LLMs and serving them to the, their, their members of the Federation through Fetty mods. That's all kind of part of this, um, this vision as well. Um, any questions, point of clarity you think, Cody, so far? No, I think that's good. Yeah, I mean, that's something that uh, we've been kind of running into for a bunch of stuff as we've been talking about this is um, like a lot of the third party AI providers right now is like, so some of the WebLN standards that we've been doing is like wrapping those third party API calls with WebLN. But so that's kind of like the first thing I think we're going to cover for today. And then after we cover that, then we can kind of go like, so that's kind of like the phase one of Fetty mods, but like eventually you're going to be able to use the same interface kind of like the Fetty mods stand, um, stuff that we're going to be building here. And then you could move the models, you could move the, um, whatever the AI application that you're actually running on the back end, you could move that's being hosted by the Federation. And so like just kind of have local, more local control over the model that you're running instead of hitting a third party provider. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then super briefly, again, phase three, this is way, way, way out there, but um, yeah, ideally these, these web applications can access Fetty Mint APIs directly, um, but there's still tons and tons of work to do. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's the natural progression, right? Um, so yeah, let's get into the, the, the meat of it here. Um, we're gonna just kind of see what it's like, where, where basic Fetty mods are, out, are at right now. We're gonna do a bit of a deep dive on um, web LN compatibility. So, right, like a basic Fetty mod, you just need to make a web LN compatible uh, yep. uh, web app. And um, there's actually, I want to disambiguate a little bit um, between the web L in the web LN spec. There's actually this web LN .dev, web LN .guide. Uh, If anyone's confused by this, we can. I just want to show. Um, basically, just explain the architecture of web LN a little bit for anyone who might be maybe a little confused by it because it's meant to be super like, okay, out of the box, it just works. Um, but as developers, you know, it's helpful to get, get yeah. an understanding of what's going on. Uh, and then I'll show you guys um, how to actually add your own custom Fetty mods within the Fetty Alpha app. And then by the end of this workshop, we should kind of just, if you if you want to make sure that your web app is compatible with it, you should um, kind of get, have an idea of, of, of how to do that. Um, so, you know, let's, dive into this here so um yeah first of all web ln is this uh it, it's a spec that's kind of been it's, it's obviously an, it's an open spec right and uh uh jewel lightning jewel was a uh, if you're familiar with get albi um that's like you know the the pretty popular chrome extension lightning wallet albi um mm -hmm. it's kind of precursor like you know there was years ago uh lightning jewel um, was kind of 
something very similar, but it didn't. I think uh, Albi got a lot more steam than uh, than Jewel did, and so WebLM uh, originated with with Jewel, and so we ended up. You know, we we had the spec. Um, Will O'Byrne actually uh, kind of laid down the groundwork, and then the guys from Albi pick, picked up um, picked it up a little bit. There's some slight differences, but um, the API itself is, is mostly the same. You know, get info, send payment, make invoice, sign message, verify message. Uh, the only difference between these kind of two uh, documentation guides here is like the assumption um, that you're making um, when you're detecting WebLN support. Uh, and so on webln.guide, you'll see, okay, well, you don't need to add any library to your project. Whereas on webln.dev, you'll see that you do actually install uh, a little bit of JavaScript. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's, it's, it's a little confusing. It's like, which is it? Okay. Like, um, so I think one important concept here to distinguish is uh, a, a webln provider versus a webln uh, compatible web app. Yep. So a webln provider is basically what Albi is, Jewel, Blue Wallet, Fetty, the, the browser that I'm going to show you um, that, that, that the Fetty app uses. Um, that's a WebLN provider as well. And so the WebLN providers were just responsible for injecting that window.webln object that's, that you, you need uh, in order to access these functions. And mm -hmm. so the idea here was that it... Um, Alby just wanted to make it as simple as possible. So like, don't even worry about adding any libraries to your project. Just start looking for that window.webln object. And if anybody has Alby installed, um, Alby is the one responsible for injecting that into your, into the user's browser uh, yes. after loading the web app. So there's the WebLN provider and the WebLN compatible web app. These two distinct ideas um, that are both needed to get WebLN to work. Um, and so the slightly different um, method here, you'll see at webln.dev, depending on uh, the way that you implement this, is um, you know this this is the idea that, that you would you would install a library that knows how to request for a provider, and so mm -hmm. you're detecting whether webln is that. So you might you might want to consider kind of. Um, Using the wet request provider or uh, detect WebLN, I think, I mean, this is kind of the common thread between the two. It's just like, if this window.webln object is available, then you're ready to, to use WebLN. Um, so yeah, that's, that's more or less, that's the main, basically the main difference that everything else is, ex is, is exactly the same. Um, and again, this is an open spec. It's an open standard. If you have some input on uh, whether whether this is too confusing, whether we need a more unified spec for this, definitely jump in the GitHub and and mm -hmm. get involved. Um, but but yeah, it should be it should be relatively easy to follow from there. And um, yeah, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about how the Fetty app uses um, how, how the Fetty app it, um, serves WebLN, how it how it serves as a WebLN provider. Um, and let's see here. So, my notes here, I'm not any important details. Um, yeah, okay, so uh, as far as the, the mobile app, I'm gonna show you guys here. Uh, we use React Native um, for the Fetty app, and so this package, React Native WebLN, basically packages this, uh, or rather uses uh, React Native WebView, because um, it's kind of like an embedded uh, browser within the mobile app, and so, when you go to load your WebLN compatible site, um, this uh, library just kind of makes sure um, that the uh, that 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 the functions that we need to respond to a, a WebLN compatible app are are there in our implementation. So basically, the Fetty, Fetty app has has this code, um, you know, running, and then we have each of these. Uh, implementations of, of each function so that we know when somebody wants to create an invoice, uh, we run that code and we communicate it to the Federation. Um, so yeah, React Native WebLN is, is the library we use. And um, yeah, so I think as far as information goes, we can basically just try at this point now to um, just try and 
hack it together. Actually, let me let me um. So yeah, let's get, let's circle back here too. If you have not downloaded the Fetty app, I've got my simulator open here, and so this is something you you can do um, you know, with the Fetty app, and and if you want to start testing your your web uh, your your WebLN compatible web app with the Fetty app, um, you should be able to do that from Fetty Alpha. So if you go ahead and download Fetty Alpha, uh, this is my little dev build, but um, this should be available uh, from the current. Uh, build. So if you haven't joined a federation yet, uh, what you're going to want to do is go to Betty Alpha, alpha, alpha.betty.xyz, and you will get this federation code. And sometimes I have issues with the uh, clipboard getting paste. Okay, cool. So you join the federation, um, choose a username, get into the wallet. If this is your first time seeing it, great. Um, you know, play with it a little bit. First thing you want to do is get some test sets from the faucet. Um, so yeah, same same website here, uh, generating an invoice. So you already this is we'll we'll, we'll get into the uh, the nitty gritty here, but you're already kind of seeing the the Fetty mod. Like this is tech, technically a Fetty mod. It's just a web web LN compatible web app that's already uh, asking me to to generate an invoice. My wallet passes that invoice right back through into the website. So now the faucet is the faucet is able to pay that invoice and send me the sats. Um, so yeah, there's that incoming transaction. I've got some sats in my wallet. Uh, and so again, down here, this is this is where, where the Fetty mods live. And these are just the four um, default Fetty mods that are configured to be served um, to every member of the Federation. And so if you want to add your own uh, Fetty mods, what you're going to do is you're going to go over to settings. You're going to access the super secret developer settings. Uh, this general text here, you're just going to want to smash on that about 10 times before this developer settings uh, section pops up. You open that, and then you're going to see this section called Add Custom Fetty Mod. And so here we can basically add whatever website we want. Um, and so I'm going to take uh, a pause here. So what we're going to try to do now is just kind of from, from scratch uh, on Revlet, just try to build a little WebLN compatible web app. Uh, it's going to be very crude. <laughs> but... Um, but yeah, I, we're gonna get it running here in the. Um... Oh, wait, the REPL open. I, I'm gonna use this template, the auto refresh, and uh, workshop test. Throw this open, and just in the spirit of AI for all, um, we're gonna, you know try and uh, take advantage of, of, of Ghostwriter. I don't know if you could you know, use that. Um, but yeah, I think I think it'll be fun to, to see how that performs. Um, don't need the console or the shell right now, but uh, let's go ahead and test this first. So, you know, this is a basic HTML site. When you hit run, Replit generates this uh, URL for you automatically. And I'm also gonna just have this open in a separate tab. We've got my hello world. Uh, and then all you got to do, let's copy, paste this in. And again, my clipboard sometimes doesn't pop in. Okay. Oh, I've got a little buddy there. Study mod workshop. Put a little title for it. Save it. Okay, so now it's in your list. And if you pop back over to the home page, you'll see it pop up. Um, so now let's see if that loads there. I got my hello world and I should be able to take advantage of the hot reloading here. Put a little H1 on the page. And it's automa automatically updating it in the app. So, I mean, this should work, you know, if you have your mobile device, download the app and uh, add your replit. Um, it's like a live a live coding tool. Um, so yeah, let's, let's get into it. Let's keep going here. Let's get Ghostwriter 2. Um, let's see, let's go over to GitHub and I'm gonna give it a little snippet of the spec or the uh, TypeScript types. And I'm gonna tell it, let's get Ghostwriter in here. Let's get that here and out here. Okay, so Ghostwriter. Uh, write me some basic, write, write some 
uh, HTML elements and JS code uh, that will work to help so that I can uh, click buttons and run uh, yeah, buttons to test an implementation of this interface. I'm going to have to ignore the TypeScript for the moment, since we're running just pure JavaScript out here. Uh, and yeah, let's see how it, how, it, how it does there. Spitting out a bunch of little HTML, got a bunch of buttons, uh, and then you know IDs on each button so I can scoop it up in the JavaScript. So I'm going to pop these into my Betty mod automatically updates over here on the right. So it's a nice, nice little like live debugging or live de live de development experience here. Uh, the script JS is referenced in its own file. So let's copy that code over as well. And let's see what it came up with. We're probably gonna tweak some of this. Uh, but right, so we got all of our uh, elements so yeah, WebLM provider. So yeah, obviously, it's it's getting wrong here. The how we detect WebLM. So let's let's cover that a little bit deeper. So uh, let's add some console.infos here. Oh, and I'll also show you guys this, this tool um, that should make it easier for you to uh, debug and develop your Betty mod. Um, but let's see. So enable button. Uh, I want to see what the window.webln object looks like it should be unavailable uh, for now, but we're going to fix that. And one issue with kind of <laughs> this mobile browser is I can't see this this console log uh, from, from within like a mobile browser. Um, so what I actually recommend is this tool called Aruda um, that's going to basically inject a super convenient little console that we're going to be able to use here. So uh, if you, uh, yeah, we can link this in the uh, in the stream notes. But um, this little script right here is all we need. We're gonna add a replit. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of the replit badge for now. And let's add this little bit of JavaScript. Uh, convenient mobile dev tool. And this is our custom JS. Uh, okay, so so you'll notice here, hot reloading already popped this little icon down below, and so now we're going to be able to click in and see logs that we have. Set up. So I'm going to go ahead and click the enable button, which is this first button here. And so it should be running this function. I should see a little console.info pop up as soon as I click it. There we see. Uh, so window.webln actually does have uh, something in it. And I will explain why. WebLM provider is not defined. That's expected because this object is just some random object that Ghostwriter thought existed, which doesn't obviously exist yet. So uh, I'm going to comment uh, all those instances out. We'll come back to that. So we basically need to teach our web our, our web app that uh, about the existence of, of WebLM, obviously using this this WebLM window or object. Um, so window that WebLM. So so why does uh, so how is it that um, that window dot WebLM is available to us? Well, it's because um, the React Native WebLM library sets up the window.webln object for us to use automatically. Um, but let's see. So, so if we have access to all these functions, you know, I'm actually this, uh, yeah, I thought that actually wasn't going to be defined yet, but, um, yeah, so, well, it's okay. It depends on how we want to implement this, right? So we, we can just rely on window.webln existing uh, and actually- Well, if you, try to, if you try to open window.webln 
inside of Rublet. I think you'll try. I think you'll notice that it's not defined there because that's in an iframe. So if you go to the yeah. web view, then you can yeah, see let, there. Yeah, that's a good one actually. Um, so if you yeah. yeah, so here it will be, I think, because you have Albi. So exactly. Albi's in general. Yes. That's what I was getting at. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Um, so yeah, there's there's uh, window dot and is defined, and and so yeah, that's actually interesting. So so clicking this. So these are different objects. The explanation yep. is because Albi is the one injecting web, WebLN here on my Chrome, Google Chrome browser, whereas uh, Fetty, or, you know, the Fetty app through the React Native WebLN library is injecting WebLN into the uh, mobile browser here. Uh, so, so that's the that WebLN provider at play. Um, and so, yeah, WebLN, so Albi's version of WebLN, the way that it's injected is slightly different. I needed to enable it in order to be able to use those functions, whereas uh, the React Native WebLN implementation of it uh, is uses this kind of like this request provider pattern. Um, mm -hmm. But anyways, yeah, that's, that's, the, that, that's the key bit there. As a developer, you want to know where your WebLN instance is, is coming from, um, and you want to be checking for it on the page. So that, that's, let's do that first and just kind of um, make sure that this is available. Uh, and so typically when you, you want to make sure that the better can do it this. So add some JS code that um, looks to detect. Let's actually throw in the blob. Uh, getting started. Detecting web on support. Let's see. I mean, I guess we could just could probably use this directly. I'm just curious to see how Ghostwriter does. Let's see uh, whether the WebLN object, the dot WebLN object, is available uh, and store it. Uh, as I guess this WebLN provider. Easy enough. Well, yeah, I was already kind of writing that, but uh, type of window that WebLN does not equal undefined. The uh, D docs recommend. Um, might even just want to use this um yeah let's just run with it okay so we just want to make sure where the window that where the exists and actually we want we want it to do it on document load so that's okay yeah that's where i'm going here so we, we do want to make sure that the document has loaded before running this check so what is that again document dot add that listener dom Content loaded. Uh, there we go. So when the window is loaded, if window dot webln, and web, there it is. Sweet. Um, and then yeah, I think let's let's touch a little bit on this request provider implementation. Um, give me a second here. Where did I put that other reference? Okay, yeah. So the request provider, I'm gonna copy this code over. Make this a little bit better. So whether this WebLN object is, is there, um, that's, yes, yeah, so this is, sorry, a little getting crossed up here. No, let's let's see actually see if this WebLN object just works out of the box. So let's just store it there, and then the functions below should be able to use it. And we'll see how our Fetty implementation interacts with it. So get info. Let's try the get info call, and let's also store the result. All right. So enable, you know what? That also 
So let's actually see if enable is even required because it, it shouldn't be depending on the provider, but uh, we hit, we're storing it here. So right, let's, let's give this a test. So nothing's logged here. If I run get info, so WebLN provider is not defined. Actually, let me reload that real quick because sometimes it doesn't get all the way there. There we go, get info. So we had the WebLN provider .get info function run and we see the response coming back. So, so this is, uh, this is the, the FETI app responding with the hub key of the Federation members selected Lightning Gateway. Um, Lightning Gateways are uh, a FETI mint concept if you haven't heard of them. Uh, but basically when you're designing or when you're, when you're developing a, a WebLN, when you're developing a FETI mod, um, you, what you're basically getting is the, you're communicating with the node uh, from a, what's, what's called a lightning gateway. Uh, so it's different from the Federation. It's not the Federation's lightning node. It's uh, one or more lightning gateways that are responsible for um, swapping eCash with lightning network Satoshis. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's a whole rabbit hole in and of itself, but that's, I mean, the high level is that, that that's what you're communicating with. Um, each Federation member doesn't, you know, have their own lightning node. Um, but in terms of identity, uh, this is going to be an important point too, because um, a, a Federation member may not have uh, the same pub key uh, every time you ask for it. So um, this is something we're going to uh, need to pay close attention to on, on the Fetty side to make sure that uh, identity is consistent. And um, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's typical to maybe assume that, uh, you know, this pub key is, is what you can use for, for your user's identity, but um, that, that may not always be the case in, in a pediment context. Um, so, so yeah, just be, be mindful that this is the, the, the lightning gateway, this is the pub key of the lightning gateway. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, there, we have this coming back and forth. Let's try it. Let's try the send payment uh, function now. So and actually, let's go in reverse there. Let's do the make invoice. So let's let's get our Fetty mod to ask the Federation member for an invoice. Uh, and let's start. Uh, make invoice. So I can paste. Uh, text to I, mean, I guess we don't really need the field we'll need the field for the, the send payment uh, but yeah actually we, we, we'll just use the logs to uh, to see the that the, that the invoice came back to us uh, so make invoice here okay so here it's, it's it's asking for a prompt so we don't need that prompt Okay, make invoice. So now let's go with results. No amount just yet, or at least. Uh, yeah, so um, not to get too much into the basics of uh, the WebLN functions, but uh, when you use the make invoice function, uh, you either give it an amount saying, okay, I know if you already know the amount that you want to generate the invoice for, then you'd pass it as, as that parameter. And we can see that in the spec, uh, make invoice. Uh, when the explicit amount is set, then you should just straight up generate an invoice and that's going to be easy. Um, but you can also uh, allow the user to put an amount and give them kind of a set of parameters, set a default, um, a minimum, a maximum. Um, but yeah, basically, if the amount exists, then just generate the invoice straight up. So let's let's do two examples of that. We'll have uh, make invoice. Let's do another button actually. So we'll have the make invoice button. Uh, fixed amount. Dynamic amount. Separate those IDs out, add it to up here, add a new event listener. And I guess the other note here is that uh, Fetty, Fetty mods are 
We don't support the sign and verify just yet. We are going to get that right in very, very soon, actually. Um, nor do we support key send, but make invoice, send payment, get info works. It's not necessarily too helpful again because that weaker assumption that that's the identity that you should use for the user. Uh, but it does obviously respond, as we saw. Uh, and the enable isn't really needed either. So again, you know, just the way that certain providers work, you don't always need to enable it. It's a, it is a different uh, in, in in the spec, but you know, Albi uh, uh, takes care of that. Whereas since we're not using Albi, uh, it's a different way to go about that. So uh, get info, send payment, and make invoice are the ones with the bulk of the functionality right now. So let's do a fourth there, make invoice dynamic. Uh, so this for this guy, we're gonna set default amount. We uh, we can just set nothing. Let's let's just leave this blank. Um, is that memo? We'll put the memo in there. Default memo for both. Test dynamic input and test fix input. So this will have an amount, let's go with, what is this in sats? So let's do hundred sats and then no amount there. Okay, so here we have our two very crude buttons. If I click, well, get the result back. Fixed, make invoice. Dynamic. Uh, okay, result, result. Let's also just throw in in case anything goes wrong. Oops. All right, let's test that out. Uh, okay, so I mean, the hot reloading should mostly be respected, so it's good to go. For the fixed amount. Okay, so we saw our log come up. This function is running, and now we're awaiting this promise. So we haven't gone down here yet. So at this point, where we have the, the Fetty, the, the Fetty mod browser is intercepting. Um, it's it's uh, it, it's 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 responsible for returning that promise back. But we haven't done that yet. App interface. This is not um, that what this little overlay is not controlled by the Fetty mod. Uh, it's controlled by the Fetty app. Um, but it's triggered by the Fetty mod by by use of this this make invoice function with the correct parameters. So we have our 100 sats pop up there. Um, the memo, I might have forgotten to display it, uh, but it should be picking up on this default memo uh, and it displays it. I'm going to just be a little bug on our end. Um, if I reject here, we'll see. I should have put it a little try catch. So this is also a good practice here is make sure to catch errors for your user. There's a whole section here on how to handle errors that you want to be sure to pay attention to. Uh, you should be catching just in case the, uh, the WebLM provider, um, you know, throws an error for you. If the user rejects, then you need to uh, uh, make sure the user experience is, is clean for that. So let's make sure we do that. Use the console error. Uh, tell us where it came from. What the error is. Let's do it this way. All right, so let's run that back. Let's do 101. Turn it again. 101. Uh, reject it and check our logs. Okay, so we had the first make invoice fixed. This guy ran. We didn't get here because the promise did not resolve. It We got an error back, and so we went down to the try, uh, to the catch statement, and that's what we see here. Okay, the payment request was rejected. Um, so yeah, obviously error handling is super important. Make sure the user experience is smooth if you need to change your UI in response to the user rejecting it, um, that uh, this error handling is gonna be important for that. Um, so so yeah, let's let's actually try accepting that. So if anyone wants to pay you one-on-one -on -one sats, I accept. So this should trigger the result and we should see what our result object looks like. Okay, so make invoice fixed returns. We got our payment request. And so now as a web LM compatible web app, you're gonna to wanna to take this invoice and pay it with your you know, lightning implementation. 
Um, so, so yeah, we're able to get invoices from um, the FETI member. Uh, and let's also test the dynamic amount. So the fixed amount seems to work. And uh, yeah, you can actually see, if you look closely, the, uh, the if you decode this invoice, we can see the 101 sats, actually, or one, yeah, 1,010 millisats, or no, did I get that wrong? Oh yeah, there's there, there's different, uh, yeah, if you're curious about how the amount is encoded in there, there's all these, like the N1P is, uh, those are kind of multipliers on it, but the amount's encoded in there, we can see it. Um, let's check the dynamic amount now. Okay, so yeah, since we didn't put an amount, we see, uh, yeah, so we can't scroll down just yet, but you should, well, so this is the dynamic click listener that just got fired. No um, no amount was given. And so we're, Fetty, Fetty, the FettyMod browser is uh, configured to make sure that we uh, ask the user for uh, an amount here. And I think the keyboard, there it is. Um, still working on some bugs with the keyboard there, but the user can now set their own amount. Um, or they, you know, we have a little fiat conversion there. Uh, and if I accept it here, we'll see another payment request coming back for a different amount uh, based on what the user provided. Uh, so yeah, making invoices seems to work. Uh, again, it's up to you as a, as a web developer to uh, figure out what to do with this invoice and get it paid. Um, but that's how you uh, get invoices uh, for, for me to be able to pay your users. So now let's go in the other direction. Um, actually paying invoices so so yeah we need we're gonna need the use uh use the faucet here uh but yeah let's see so let's just test our so our send payment functions up here let's add some logs send payment yeah and this is where we, we are going to need a little input uh so add a field for the send payment button so i can paste an invoice and in that field and the value can be passed along as an argument to the send payment function. Uh, okay, there it's a little, a little add field. Throw that in our JavaScript to the top. Got to add it to our HTML as well. Ignore that part. Yeah, it looks like it ignored that part. That's okay. We'll add our own. Uh, and let's, uh, you know what? Actually, this is pretty cool too. So um, add some basic CSS to the HTML elements. So the buttons are cleaner. Uh, and nicer to look at. So let me throw this CSS in. Didn't have my send payment input just yet. Do a label. Invoice. For payment request, nice. Okay, there's a little invoice box. Um, let's ask Ghostwriter to, um, Left align my HTML elements and add some line breaks between them. Let's see if that works. Cool. Didn't add the line breaks. Oh, well, I got to do that in HTML. I need, well, so I'll do it manually. Make this a little easier to navigate. There we go. That's 
let's throw the unsupported functions together. All right. There we go. Okay, a little easier to separate what's going on here. So, okay, so we want an invoice to paste in here that gets paid by the Federation member automatically. Uh, so to get actually to actually get an invoice, we're going to use the faucet here. Uh, how many sats? Let's go with 500 sats. Generate this invoice. Paste it in the field. And let's make sure we got our log set up. Send payment button. Uh, okay, so yeah, we don't want to prompt. Ghostwriter gave us something for this, didn't it? Make invoice, make invoice. Send payment invoice dot value. Easy enough. There we go. So send payment input. Double check that we identified it up here. There it is. Okay. So. Alrighty. So send payment. Let's just log our send payment input value and our result that we get back. All right. Let's see what we got here. So, oh, I just I go get that invoice again. Paste it in. Send payment. Let me get my console open. Oh, can I not get down there? Uh, that's going to be annoying. Let's see if I can tweak the settings a bit here. There we go. Okay. Oop. Console. All right. So let's see what the send payment function. Can I read property value of null? Must have a bug in my code somewhere. Send payment input. Send payment input. Did I not give it the right ID? Of course not. Send payment input. There we go. So that should copy my invoice again. Get the log open. Send it. Can I probably send payment undefined? What happened to my WebLN provider? Sometimes, yeah, honestly, I, I think it, it might even be my emulator. Let me just get back, refresh it, give it one more go. No, something's wrong. Send payment. Okay, so WebLM provider is still not defined. Why? When it was working before. For the other functions. Okay, that time it went through. So that time it failed to decode the invoice because it was basically past an empty function. So why? Let's... There we go. Okay. So let me just reject it so we can see our logs. I forgot my try catch statement again. Actually, let's be thorough here. Uh, so let's wrap this guy up. Boom. Pop these guys in. All right. Let's try that one more time. Send payment. Undefined. Okay, I think our LLM provider got lost again. Again, this should actually be a lot more stable if you test it from your device. What we're seeing here is, I think, issues with the hot reloading of my simulator. Pretty sure. Yeah, let me actually give it a refresh. Sometimes this happens. I think I have an error somewhere. Oh, there we go. Okay. So 
web All right, so now we're getting our can I read property sim payment? Got my web online provider. Send payment inputs. What's going on here? I mean, it was working for a second, so these are just kind of little trip ups here with the simulator setup, I think. Okay, there we go. So we got our payment request. It's empty because there's nothing in that box. Let's go one more time here. Let's generate a fresh one for 600. Pop it in. Send the payment. Okay. Reject. All right. So let's analyze. Uh, we got the send payment. Uh, it showed our WebLM provider object that I had logged. It's got this, uh, this new invoice that's six suggests that it reflects our correct new amount. Um, and we get the payment request log that we added here. So that's all good. And instead of getting the result back as an info, we got the error back because the user rejected, payment rejected. Um, so yeah, that's when we're, we're you know, in our, in our web app, we'd want to make sure we display an error. Um, but uh, okay, let's try actually confirming that then. Payment request for my Fetty mod. Uh, let's actually test one more. No, yeah, I think that's good. It doesn't have a memo because it was generated from the faucet. Um, except, so now my Fetty wallet should have sent that back. We got this pre image, so it looks like uh, the Fetty wallet did successfully pay that invoice and it brought us back this pre-image. Now you as a web developer, um, you do with this pre-image, whatever, whatever you need to. Um, but if we go and check our wallet now, we should see 600 sets have been sent. And we'll go for myself here, test. Um, cool, so yeah, I think, uh, I think that's about all I wanted to run and test through. Um, you know, Replit is obviously an awesome tool. Definitely take advantage of it. Uh, that uh, Erudia console is obviously super useful for developing, uh, you know, debugging your, your Fetty mods here. And, uh, you know, we know how to add it from your settings. I think that's just about um, everything I wanted to cover today. But uh, just a little refresher, the developer settings, you can add whatever custom mods you want if you want to delete that it'll disappear from your list and that's how that's how to go about it so yeah what do you think cody anything else uh uh no that's that's right i mean what's the can you go back to what the root is can you go to web view just so i can kind of show that because what's cool about this since we added that you can basically add your own sites inside of here is that i can add that into like my fetty running the app right now running yeah, on my exactly. phone right now right Mm -hmm. So while we do this, I can just quickly add this in. So the site is Betty Mod Demo. And this one is uh, HTTPS slash slash Betty Mod dot or dash workshop dash test dot o z twenty one m dot ruple dot co and so now that shows up on my yep. app right there and then I can click into it and I can be running this live over there. Right. And so just generally speaking, this is like a really nice workflow for it because you can have like an emulator set up, set up or, and also be do, doing it on your phone and also have like a couple phones next to you. So you can be mm -hmm. building web online apps for mobile, which is really nice. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, definitely just a, you know, a call for, for feedback on tooling. So, um, you know, this little integrated console is one example of that. If there are any, tooling, uh, if there's any kind of tooling that, that would make developing these Fetty mods easier from within the Fetty app, um, that's what we're going to be trying to 
build for. And uh, yeah, if there's if, if there's any feedback from the community around that, that's uh, that's gonna be yeah, good. real fast. Do you wanna um, we can just we can cut this at the end if it doesn't end up working. But for uh, do you wanna try? We can try hitting hit against Matador from inside of here, and then doing the okay. payment, and then completing the L four hundred two. I think that'll be fun for us. on mainnet. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, it's running on mainnet right now. So if you go to, right. um, just go to, where is it? Go to, um, go to new app for sorry, a new, new tab and go to matador dash AI dot repl, sorry, dot repl dot app. All right. There you go. Cool. Yeah. So, um, if we go look at the, so these are the L402 headers that we're going to use for there. And this runs exactly like if you hit against OpenAI, right? So you don't need an, mm -hmm. AI key, an OpenAI key for this. You're just doing Panga Lightning invoices. And so the if we go just kind of go into the inspect so that we can see what the network call looks like for this. So when we do the request, nice. Okay, so let's go into the user prompt and just write something like, I don't know, Lightning or something. Right, and then we can go look at the network call. There you go. Yep. Correct. Okay. Right, and so that's connecting to, this is uh, just because we're doing the demo oh, nice. of this one there, is that this is hitting against, um, it's hitting against at your Albi right now, right? Exactly. So we can do yeah. connect. So yeah, then, so, so our, our my Chrome browser is receiving the WebLN object from Albi and Matador is calling the WebLN dot enable yep. function and mm -hmm. Albi is, is corresponding. Cool. So uh, you do the connect. So this guy. And then when so you hit pay, then that retries the call with the pre-image nice. from the pay. Nice. So, oh. Amazing. Yeah, do we want to do we want to try to see if we miss? Yeah, let's Definitely see. Um, do you have the so, mainnet federation? Uh oh yeah, no, that's true. String? The mainnet federation there. So I'll give you the uh, I'll give you the mainnet yes. connection there. Yes, I mean, but, let's see if I can okay. see if it plugs in here. Yeah, give it a go. Sure. Uh, we go to here, and then go to. You can join the federation that I set up. Yesterday is in dev. Okay, Oscar. Damn, it just sends you on Slack. There it is. Okay. Sweet. So. Uh, I guess I should load some stats up in here. Use my Albi wallet for that. Yeah. Crossed. Yep. I've been having some issues with the Lightning Gateway. Uh, no, no. Not enough inbound capacity. Not enough inbound capacity. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Let's try at least the. Uh, Try one more time. Oh, yeah. and... yeah, I mean, it's got. I mean, maybe I'll try from a different wallet actually. Yeah, let's try one more time. Pull my mobile wallet out. And this one's just because the, the Federation, this was one that I just set up for demo purposes. Yeah. So the lightning node on it is not exactly stable yet. But 
Let's see if all the Satoshi can find a way. No. Got routing issues on that node. Mm, yeah. Unfortunately. That. <laughs> ah, that's annoying. Close. Yeah. But, uh, but I mean, right. you can still see the calls if we do that. So if you just if you just hit it, you'll you'll see it'll pop up. We won't be able to get the payment for it. But just go. Right. It's not have any money. It is communicating though. So this is actually this is yeah. That's expected behavior for a wallet that doesn't have any any sats in it. Yeah. Uh, so it is working. <laughs> yeah. Is important too. Yep. Okay. Well, you know, we'll try. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, man. All right. Sweet. This is good. All right. Let's hit end.